Hi, this is Jim Obermeyer with Christ the Healer Ministries, and I want to talk to you today, especially those who are unbelievers in Jesus Christ. You don't believe in Jesus Christ. Maybe you don't even believe in God. Maybe you're an agnostic or a, an atheist. And also, this is for Christians who don't know why they believe what they believe. I'm going to be talking to you as well. So I'm going to just start, and we're going to talk about some things that might surprise and shock you especially if you're an atheist or if you're an unbeliever. But one thing I ask is that you please be honest and be open to something that may just be the truth and you don't understand that. So you don't believe in God, why not? I have some propositions for you to consider if you are an unbeliever and an honest person. Personally, I've thought about a lot of this throughout my life and have come to the conclusion that it takes more faith not to believe in God than to believe in God. Consider this, how does something come out of nothing? How could all of this creation, everything that's in existence, you, everything you touch, everything you see, everything that's made out of atoms, how does it come into existence from nothing? All of the life in the world, from animal and plant life to human life. How about what happened in history? Jesus was a real person. He lived upon this earth. Did he really heal the sick? Did he really raise the dead back to life and resurrect himself from the dead? Well, that's something we're going to talk about today. And I know you're going to say, well, I believe in science. We've, especially the last couple of years, we've been told to believe the science. Well... Believe the science, but not every scientist. What does a person really, what does science really prove? We've heard a lot in the past few years about believing the science. Can you believe the science and believe the Bible at the same time? Yes, I say yes. And not only do I so say so, but many, many scientists say so. Can we believe what the Bible says? I say yes. Is it scientifically possible that the earth is only 6,000 years old and the Grand Canyon did not take millions of years to form? Is it possible that a man named Jesus lived upon this earth, died a horrible death, on the third day rose from the dead to live forever, miraculously? I say yes, and some scientists say yes. Not all scientists are atheists. I have a list here. See all those? Dr. James Allen, a geneticist. Dr. Steve Austin, a PhD in, psych in geology. Dr. Baumgartner in geophysics and space physics. Dr. Donald Chittick, physical chemistry. Dr. Tim Clary, geology. Dr. Tim Ken Cumming, biology. And it goes on. Dr. Vernon Cups, nuclear physics. Dr. Raymond Damadian, or Damadian, not sure how you pronounce it, the pioneer of the MRI scanner. Um, Dr. Damadian in 1994 told Creation Magazine, the highest purpose a man can find in his life is to serve the will of God. He questions whether a society that abandons God God's absolute standards revealed in the Bible can discern the just from the unjust. Well, I kind of agree with him that you can't if you don't believe the Bible. Well, here's a whole list of many, many others from Dr. David DeWitt in neuroscience and Dr. Donald DeYoung in physics, Jonathan Henry, chemical engineering, Dr. Ed Holroyd the third atmospheric scientist, uh, Dr. Hoskin, biochemistry, anthropologist, Dr. Huber, Dr. Humphreys, and nuclear physics. All of these are scientists, as well as the ones that I just read off. So these are scientists that believe the Bible is the Word of God, and they believe that it is a revelation of God and God's will for mankind. I was watching a video on creation because I've questioned many of these things myself, and Creation and Science, and the narrator, and you can find this, I believe, on YouTube. Uh, if you look up Genesis video, creation video, 
And there was a, the narrator was standing in a cavern that looked very much like a smaller version of the Grand Canyon. And it had layers of different kinds of soil and rock. And he said, the people probably think it took thousands of years to form this cavern that he was standing in. It happened in one day. It was near Mount St. Helens. When Mount St. Helens exploded, the runoff created this cavern that looked like a small version of the Grand Canyon. He also told about how impossible because of the layering and formations of the Grand Canyon for it to be formed by millions of years of the Colorado River. There was a larger catastro catastrophic event that caused it that was probably the result of the worldwide flood talked about in Genesis. And um, I thought that was fascinating, and especially seeing this cavern, because when I saw it, I thought, I wonder where he is, because it looked like the Grand Canyon, only a smaller version of it. So it would be impossible for the Grand Canyon to have been formed over millions of years by a river flowing through it. And there are many reasons only scientists would know these. I'm not a scientist, so I can't quote them to you, but this whole video was about that. Josephus, Flavius Josephus, was a Jewish historian that lived from 37 to 100 AD. Well, here is what's recorded by Flavius Josephus, who was a priestly, part of the priestly or aristocracy of the Jews in the first century. Now, there was about this time, Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was Christ. The word Christ means anointed one. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at the first did not forsake him. For he appeared to them alive again the third day. As the divine prophets had foretold, these and 10,000 other wonderful things concerning him. And the tribe of Christians, so named from him, are not extinct to this day. Well, he was not a Christian. To our knowledge, he's never became a Christian. He was a Jewish historian who just mostly told about Jewish history. But Jesus was a part of that. Now, to go on to prophecies. The Bible is such a unique book because the Bible was filled with prophecies. 365 of the Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the man, the God, Jesus Christ, who was God-man. Um, 365 prophecies. Now, I have a list of these also. It says that it would be the seed of a woman. He would be born of a virgin. Joseph, by the way, when he found out he was, she was pregnant, almost divorced her before she even had the baby. And an angel appeared to him and said, no, this baby is the Son of God. And you will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And so Joseph kept Mary, which was a miracle in itself, he didn't want to when he found out she was pregnant without him. But she was pregnant because of the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus was God because of his father, and he was man because of his mother Mary, the Virgin Mary. Well, here is a list of the prophecies. Look at this. All biblical prophecies. He would be the seed of a woman, a virgin birth. Uh, the bodily ascension to heaven illustrated. He ascended into heaven with many people watching him as he went up after the resurrection. He would be of Abraham's seed. He would be a king also. He was king of the Jews. It said it on his cross. Remember the seed of Isaac, the seed who will bless all nations. The time of his coming was predicted. He would come to Judah, Judah. He would be the great I am. And in fact, when he was asked who he was, he said, I am. And that is the name of God. That's what God gave to Moses. As you remember, if you know the Bible at all, when God in the burning bush, Moses saw 
a manifestation of God's presence. He asked God who he was. He says, I am that I am. God is the ever ex eternal existent one who never, who never was born, who never will die. He is eternally self-existent. He exists out of time. He does not know time. He created time for us. He exists in the eternal presence. I know it's a mystery, but you know what? God is a mystery. Many things in the world that we believe are mysteries, and that doesn't make them unreal. It just makes them a mystery. Someday we will understand it. Not a bone of him would be broken, and, and in fact, in history, it tells us that not a bone of him was broken when he hung on the cross. They broke the legs of the two thieves that were crucified with him, but on Jesus, they didn't break his legs. In, fa in fact, the guard was told to, but he said, well, he's already dead, so then he stuck the spear in Jesus' side, and out came blood in the water. That's symbolic in itself, but I won't go into that right now. Uh, the Bible tells us, curse be everyone who hangs on a tree, meaning crucifixion. And uh, in Ruth, it says that Christ would be our kinsman, our redeemer, our kinsman redeemer. In other words, our brother. He was of David's seed. His uh, bodily resurrection was predicted. He predicted it before he died. And there are many. Uh, it went on and on. It, t it tells where he would be born. He would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. And it tells many things about him. The resurrection was predicted. He would be called the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. He would be, be betrayed by a friend, and that was Judas. Um, he ascended into heaven. He would be a stranger to his own brethren. He would be zealous for the Lord's house. He would love God's house, the temple. Remember when he went into the temple, the buyers and sellers of goods were in the temple itself and he cast them out. He overturned the money changers temple, or tables in the temple. And he was a lover of the temple because it was God's presence amongst the Jews at the time. His name would be called Emmanuel, God with us. Well, there are many others. There are 360 some right here, and I have told them all. Or I, I've not told them all, but I mean, they're all here. And, and you can look it up yourself. In fact, you could even Google it. You can go on the Bible, on the on Google, and say uh, prophecies in the Bible about Christ. And you can find this whole list. It's pages of prophecies about Jesus, the Messiah. Well, how could there be so many prophecies be fulfilled in one person? The odds are astronomical. You would not believe the odds. In fact. When I looked it up, you know, we say there's a chance and a chance in a million something would happen. Well, this is not a chance in a million. It's a chance that all these prophecies would be fulfilled in one person. 100 quadrillion. Now, I know you don't know what that is any more than what I know that is. I mean, we know what a thousand is. We know what a million is because we know what a millionaire is a person who is worth at least a million dollars. A billionaire is, uh, you know, we know what that is pretty much, even though we can't imagine that much money, most of us. Uh, a quadrillion is a 100, a one with 18 zeros after it. 18 zeros. Um, I, I don't think, or 18 figures, 17 zeros, I'm sorry, but you cannot understand what that is. The odds, if you're wondering, of winning the mega millions, for those of you who do waste your money on it, uh, if it's a $1.6 billion jackpot, it was on October 2018, the odds of winning were one in 302,575,350. That would be the odds of winning that. That's just one thing, 302 million. The odds of 360 some prophecies being filled at one time in history are one in a hundred quadrillion, a hundred quadrillion. That's one to the 10, you know, we say one to the 10, it's one to the 10 
157th power. Can't imagine it. None of us can imagine that. Uh, it went on to calculate the probability of one person fulfilling 48 prophecies would be one in 10 to the 157th power, let alone 300 and some prophecies. Let's go to personal testimonies. What proves that Jesus is real more than personal testimony? Now, I know there are some say, well, anybody can say anything. I can tell you that I know Jesus is real because I've experienced him. I have actually had a glimpse of heaven when my brother died. I saw him in heaven in a dream. Many others, especially in these days, have had glimpses of heaven. They, they, I did some videos on heaven with Andrew Sullivan, who has seen heaven numerous times. He has been there and has seen what many parts of heaven look like. Not, not everything in heaven. I don't think anybody has seen everything. But there are others who have said that they have been to heaven, and I believe them because the Apostle Paul in the Bible, he said, I knew a man, and it was several years before, he said, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. But I was caught up to the third heaven. The first heaven is our sky. The second heaven is the atmosphere of the universe. And the third heaven is where God is. The apostle Paul was caught up to the third heaven. And he saw things that he said he could not express in human knowledge. He just couldn't, couldn't even say what they were. He couldn't say the words he didn't have the words to say it. And you know, it's true. I can say, I believe I have, I've had a glimpse of heaven. And I can tell you what it was when my brother died. I was 15 years of age. My brother was 20. He died in open heart surgery. We were all in shock. We thought for sure he'd come through the surgery, but he didn't. That next night, before the morning, I had a dream. And in the dream, and right before I woke up, I saw him, not only did I see him, I was talking to him, and he was in a place, the background was beautiful. It was green and lush and hilly and trees. And, and I, all I remember is it was beautiful. But the interesting thing was, there was a fence between us. It was like an old country wood fence. So I was talking to him over the fence. I woke up and in reality, I thought, oh, he's still alive. And his name was Mike. And I said, no, he's not. He died yesterday. I was lying in bed. And this beautiful feeling came in the room. It was like a cool breeze, but there were no windows open. And it was like going over my body. I didn't know what it was. Now I know many years later, of course, I know it was the presence of God, the Holy Spirit's presence that many have experienced. And I was lying in bed, and as I was experiencing this beautiful feeling, a voice spoke to me, not audible, but a still, small, silent voice said, Mike is with Jesus. I'd never heard that phrase. I was in a church where we didn't use that kind of language. We, didn't, we just didn't say that. Maybe they do now, but we didn't. Mike is with Jesus. And it gave me such comfort and peace, knowing that my brother was with the Lord. Now, did I miss him after that? Of course. Did I grieve? Of course I did. But that is so real to me. It's as real now as it was then. And that was in 1962. And it's now 2022. That's how many years ago it was. My personal testimony. When I asked Jesus to forgive my sins and come into my life, he did. When he filled me with his Holy Spirit, I'll tell you, I loaded out of the church i felt so high on the presence of god i can't even express or explain what it was like god's presence was so real to me and that's my personal testimony i could go on and on of the many miracles that i have seen that i have experienced that no one can tell me that god didn't do them and many other people have experienced them countless of other people now how about the miracle of the resurrection Jesus rose from the dead. They could not find his body. They said his disciples stole it. Of course they didn't because the tomb was sealed and they were soldiers posted out in front. Roman soldiers were posted in front of the tomb. But the story goes, and it's also recorded in Roman court documents that they saw a great light and an earthquake happened and the stone was rolled away and scared them to death, the soldiers. And they were paid to 
go tell lies about Jesus rising from the dead. But the interesting thing was after he rose from the dead, he just didn't go right up to heaven. He spent a, a lot of time right down on earth here and visited with the disciples. We're told that Jesus appeared to 500 people at once after the resurrection. Now you might say, well, one witness could be, you could be skeptical of one witness. But if you were to take it, it's been done. Years ago, it was done. They took the resurrection to a court hearing and tried it as a court case. And it was proven that Jesus rose from the dead in that court case. You cannot deny it. It's history. It's fact. It's truth. Jesus rose from the dead. Are you right with God? Do you know what it means to be right with God? My mother used to use an expression. Uh, my dad was not living for the Lord, and he grew up in church, but he went away from God when he was went into the service. And after that, he came out back from World War II and had PTSD and was pretty miserable in his life. And my mother, you know, used to just say, you need to make peace with God. Well, have you made peace with God? Have you asked God to come into your heart? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Now, Jesus was who he said he was. He was God come in the flesh. He was man and God, both, in one body. The Bible tells us in him the fullness of the God had dwelled bodily. Jesus wants you to know him and wants you to know the Father. He wants you to know him in a very personal way. How do you do that? It's by believing what the Bible says, that Jesus really did exist, that he is the Son of God, the Father, and that he wants to know you and wants you to know him. And he wants you to have a very satisfying and happy life. And maybe you're watching this and you're an atheist and you've had a happy life. Well. You may have had happiness in some forms, but you've never experienced the joy of really knowing Jesus Christ. And I can tell you there is nothing in the world like it. To have the peace, the Bible says the peace surpasses understanding. I have felt that peace at times, and it's an otherworldly peace that God gives. It's not like anything on this earth. How do you find Jesus Christ? How do you come to him? It's as simple as saying, Lord, I come to you. I receive you into my heart, into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you're real, that you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead, that you ascended into heaven, and then you sent your Holy Spirit to be here on the earth. We can't see the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that it's like when the wind blows, you see the results of it, but you don't see the wind. You cannot see the Holy Spirit, but you can see the results of him. It is God with us. The Holy Spirit is God with us. And he wants to fill you with his presence and his power and his love. God loves you. He really does love you. And you might not think God is a good God, but he is absolutely and totally good. And God wants to make himself real to you. I've given this challenge to people, and you know what? It, it proves out. And that challenge is, if you don't believe and you don't want to say the prayer, just say, God, if you're real, show me. Make yourself real to me, and I guarantee you, God will make himself real to you. I promise you that God will do it if you're sincere and you ask him. He will make himself real. Well, I'm going to pray, and I'd like you to consider the things I've said. How do you know that God is real, that Jesus is real? Well, science actually does not contradict the Bible, but true science proves the Bible, as many scientists, as I've shown you, have verified, and they believe the Bible, and they have done countless scientific experiments and study, and they still believe that the Bible is God's word, and that Jesus Christ is real. And God wants you to know him. God wants to be real to you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will make yourself real to everyone who's listening to this, everyone who's watching this. I pray especially for those who are unbelievers, who are atheists, who are agnostic, who
who may not just know if there's a God or not. And those who are backslidden, those who are Christians who have gone away from God, I pray that you will draw them by your Holy Spirit right now and bring them back to you. Show them your love. Show them your forgiveness. Show them your reality. And make yourself real to them in, to them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask it. Amen. God bless you. And if you've received Jesus today, ask him to fill you with his spirit and his power. And he will fill you with his Holy Spirit and give you that wonderful experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit like they received in Pentecost. So I'd like you to like us on our YouTube and Rumble channel and, and subscribe to my channels. And I thank you and I, I pray God's richest blessing will be upon you. And God be with you in Jesus' name. Remember, nothing is impossible with God. God bless you.